everybody, it's Heather from Handcrafted by Hev. Today I'm going to make this card. It is super quick and very easy but looks so pretty and so professional once it's done. I'm going to be using some uh, Prismacolor pencils and I'm only going to be using five colours. I've got three shades of blue and two shades of red so it's really quick and easy to achieve the look and the reason I've chosen those colours is because the backing paper is a red and blue tartan so I've chosen my colours to coordinate with the paper. So to start off I'll grab my Eureka 101 watercolour tablet from Stamps By Me. I use it absolutely all the time. It's always at the side of me. And I've already pre-cut my card stock to the size I require for the card. It's three and three quarter inches across by seven and a half inches down. The stamp I'm going to be using is a new one from Stamps By Me. It is from the um, the range is called the Circle of Light and I'll show you why. Put it against some white cardstock so you can see. There you go. Sorry I had it upside down. So it's a beautiful thistle and the reason it's got the name Circle of Light is because it's got these circles and arrows coming away from the actual image and the sentiment is time is short so buy the flowers, wear the perfume and live each day to the full. I totally agree with all of that. So I'll begin. I'm going to stamp my image and I'm going to use a, a Versafine black, uh, Onyx black ink pad because I want it to be a really nice crisp image. Pick up the, put the stamp face down on my cardstock, pick it up with my door of the Eureka grab my ink and ink it up. I'm sorry I go off the camera a little bit here when I open the door of my Eureka. I need to get a tripod so I can have my camera higher up and then I'd be able to get more in shot. But because I'm still quite new to all of this that's beautiful I don't even need to stamp that again. I'll just use my stamp clean cloth again from Stamps By Me which is very grubby but still works perfectly well and then I'm going to stamp the sentiment now to save me having to come back in and do it later and I'm overlapping it over the stem of the flower ever so slightly and I'll colour through it but you'll still be able to read it fine and again I'm going to use the Versafine ink pad so I get a nice crisp clear image for my sentiment lovely and again I don't need to stamp that again just clean my stamp again with my stamp clean cloth lovely so I'm going to take my image out of the Eureka to colour it in. Move that out of the way. And I'm going to start off with the darkest of the three blues that I've chosen. This one, if you've got the same pencils, is PC906 and it's Copenhagen Blue. And I'm just going to put little flicks of colour where the darkest part of the leafy areas would be. I don't know if you can see this well but they are just little flicks I'm hoping it's coming out okay on camera and I'm just going to go around all the areas where the stamp indicates that there is a darker shadow and I want this to coordinate with the darkest blue on the backing paper that I've chosen I have to say I absolutely adore this stamp, it's beautiful. Uh, as you know I'm on Tony's design team for Stamps By Me and she asked all the design team for some ideas and inspiration when she was doing this set of stamps and I suggested the thistle having a Scottish heritage 
being born and bred there. Well, maybe not bred fully. I came down south to Sheffield when I was six. Didn't really get a choice in that. But anyway, I'm still very proud to be Scottish. So uh, I do love thistles. So I asked Tony if she'd be kind enough to draw a thistle and she did and I absolutely love it. I think it's perfect. Right, the next colour blue I'm going to use is denim blue and this is PC1101. I don't know if you can make that out. This is such a small print. And I'm just going to go over the top of the blue that I've already done but just extend it out a little bit further into the leafy areas. I do love the effect when it's, it's all finished. I do think it looks super effective in these colours even though they're not traditional thistle colours. It does look very nice. almost done and again I'm just using little flicky strokes and the two colours kind of blend together as you go over each other so you don't get the harsh lines they are super pencils I've only purchased them recently and I'm absolutely loving them I'm using them ever such a lot experimenting with them, trying to get used to them, trying to improve my technique so it's not something I have had any training in or anything it's just having a play and see what effects I can achieve and what the finished item will look like okay so I think that's enough of that colour I'll just put it in that corner, there we go and then finally, the last blue I'm going to use is PC1086 and that's a sky blue light. So I wanted a really pale blue to blend them all together with. So it looks like the light is hitting the leaves. And I'm, again, I'm going over the other colours to help blend them a little bit. So you've not got definitive lines. And I don't know if this is the proper way you should do it, but it's the way I've been doing it for this card. And I quite like the effect it gives. I don't think there's a right or a wrong way, as long as you get the look that you're wanting to achieve. You can see as you go over, it does blend the colours so you don't get the full paleness of this blue it's on its own, it's really really pale and you can hardly see it but because I'm going over the other colours it drags it in and looks more like a highlight sorry I've gone quiet, I've been concentrating on my colouring <coughs> I do love how therapeutic colouring in is. You could do kind of get lost in your own thoughts while you're colouring in. But the beauty with these is it's so quick. I do a lot, well maybe not a lot, but I do a bit of colouring with uh, Copic pens as well. And that seems to take me an awful lot longer to achieve the same kind of blended look as I'm getting so quickly with these pencils. They're very soft and very creamy, which does mean you have to perhaps sharpen them a bit more regularly than with some of the pencils. But the effects you get make it so worth it. So, last couple of leaves to do now, and then I'm going to do the stem as well. That's the leaves done. They're looking good. I'm just going to add a bit of the mid blue and pick up the correct pencil on this leaf that I kind of missed. It's 
because it looks a little bit too light there and then just go over it again to blend it in a bit that's better and then do the stem I want to leave this quite light at the bottom so that the sentiment can still be read easily and then I'm going to come in with my darker of the two reds that I'm going to use and this is Crimson Lake and it's PC925 and I'm just going to follow the lines of the stamp but extend them out a little bit to give a little bit of a fluffy edge as a real thistle would look a little bit fluffy on the top so I'm just kind of following the squiggly lines not exact I'm trying to go up most of them and just extend them out a little bit and I'm going to go over and do exactly the same in the slightly lighter red once I've done this and that should give enough depth of colour to the head of the thistle I don't know if it's got an official name I may be able to try and find out seems I like them so much and then this is a more vibrant red and slightly lighter I'm just doing exactly the same just following the lines of the stamp little squiggles filling in some of the areas at the bottom where the light wouldn't be getting through quite so much I don't mind some open spaces at the top obviously in nature the light wouldn't get through all, all of it at the bottom but it would through some of the thinner areas that are more open towards the top of the plant there we go and then finally still using this red I'm going to go back into the shaded areas of the leaves and just add a little hint of the red just to give them a little bit more depth and a little bit more definition and again just to help them tone in with the backing paper that I've chosen I'm just doing little flicks again, little scribbles just to add in that little bit of colour don't want to go too daft and put too much on and just little bits you can if you like go in with a paper stump afterwards and just try and blend it a little bit these pencils are so good you don't even really need a blending solution but you can use a blending solution if you want a more blended look I'm not going to do that on this one I'm almost done there we go a little bit in there it's looking okay and then I'm just going to do a few little flicks down at the top of the stem where it wouldn't actually be darker I think that'll be enough it's knowing when to stop isn't it you can just keep going forever so I'll put my pencil down now so the next thing I want to do is add a piece of red ribbon onto the bottom of my card but I want there to be a bow so I'm just going to make some bunny ears I'm sure you've all done this two bunny ears and then tie them together in a knot more fingers and thumbs today that's it and then pull them through to try and get them equal sizes and I do like to try and swivel them around a bit to try and get the knot as flat as possible and get a nice flat bow that will lay across the bottom of the card it's just teasing the ribbon and getting it into the position that you want it to be in so I want it to be like that so I'm just going to add a little bit of tape at the bottom of my piece of card get my ribbon where I want it to be and then stick it down on the tape and then I will cut off the excess when I've got the ribbon where I want it to be so I don't need all that 
There we go, so that's a pretty bow. And then because I've got the ribbon on the back, I'm going to use quite a strong double-sided tape to adhere this to my backing paper. Do it the other way. Because I'm right-handed, I work better this way around. I'm using score tape, which is the tape I use when I'm making mini albums. But because I want the extra strength due to the ribbon, I thought I'd use it for this as well. Just put a little piece up on each end. Oh, that didn't rip, just one second. Didn't rip where I wanted it to, that's better. Stick my tape down, peel off the backing. You could use red liner tape as well for this, but I have to say I have stopped using it. I hate the static from the backing of the red liner tape sticking to me. And that's how I've moved on to the score tape. Right, I'm going to just line up on three sides to make sure I've got an even border and then just lay, lay it down, press it, make sure it's stuck and then I can adhere that onto my card blank. It's a DL card blank. DL cards seem to have gone a little bit out of fashion so I thought I'd try and do a couple in that style. There you go. And one finished card with a beautiful circle of light thistle on it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be back again soon with another make. Thank you very much for watching. Bye!